Welcome to Conversation 16. How would you answer the question, who is the God of the gospel? Well, here's the answer we'll explore. The God of the gospel is God who reveals himself through creation. He showed himself specifically to the nation of Israel. In the gospel, God revealed himself as three persons, yet one God. The Father sent his only Son, and they sent forth the Holy Spirit. So let's walk through that answer together. God who reveals himself through creation. We can learn some important truths about God by looking at the world he created. In fact, Romans 1.20 says as much when it says that God has shown us his eternal power and divine nature. And if we take a step back and look at this grand universe that he has made, or look at the tiny atoms and molecules that he has intricately formed, we see that he has this eternal power that is unmatched. We can see his divine nature in the way that we ourselves love our children, that we as his creation reflect this nature of love, and that uh, we can see his orderliness through the cycles that are all throughout this creation, like the water cycle, how it follows a process and has this orderliness that only can be created through this grand power. So we can see God in his creation. We can see how he works through it. But God also showed himself specifically to the nation of Israel. We can learn important truths about God through creation. This is true. But there's so much we won't know if we don't also know him apart from that creation. So a long time ago, God revealed himself in a special way to a man named Abraham and then also to his descendants. God made Abraham this promise in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will uh, bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And the people on earth will be blessed through you. And we see that God fulfills this promise as Abraham's grandson becomes Israel, and the nation would form through him. As we see his uh, descendant Judah become the lion uh, and the staff not depart from him. And King David becoming the, uh, the king that would establish the, the earthly kingly line that Jesus would come from. That God worked through Israel to uh, show us who he is. Now in the gospel, God revealed himself as three persons, yet still one God. Throughout the Bible, we find out even more about what God is like. For example, in the Old and New Testaments, we learn that there is only one God. We express this as monotheism. I know that's a big technical word, and it just simply means that we believe that there is one God. But yet this one God isn't just one person living for all eternity by himself. Instead, we discover in the Bible that God is three persons living in a relationship. There is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And they live in a relationship that is established on unity, love, and a shared will. That's why it would make sense that 1 John 4, 8 says, God is love. A helpful way of talking about God is that God is one being, yet three persons. A word that Christians use to describe this, to describe God as one, yet three, is the Trinity. And we uh, see this Trinity in Matthew three sixteen through 17 at the baptism of Jesus. In fact, I'll read this to you real quick. It says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water, and at that moment the heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. And we get to see the Trinity and the Son as he is being baptized, the Father speaking 
and the, and the Spirit descending like a dove. So we see that the Father sent his only Son. John 3.16 talks about why God the Father sent God the Son to earth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And I think it's just so important that we establish that the son was not forced to go by the father, that he desired to go, that they shared this will and this love. They were united by those things in his uh, coming down to us. That Christ chose to be a willing sacrifice for us. And then we see that they sent forth the Holy Spirit. The evening before Jesus was crucified, he told his disciples that God the Father would send them the Holy Spirit so that they wouldn't be alone until he returned. Jesus called the Holy Spirit our advocate, which means somebody who sticks up for you. In fact, John 14, 26 says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So this Advocate, he teaches us what is right, and then he sticks up for us. And Romans 8, 26 through 27 gives us a great example of how that Spirit sticks up for us. Because it says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For when we do not know how we ought to pray, the Spirit himself intercedes for us through our wordless groans. So when we have pain, when we have hurt, when we have desire that we just don't know how to put into words, the Spirit can communicate our prayer to God. And that's why it's just so important that we know who this God of the gospel is. So let's talk about one more time. How would you answer the question, who is the God of the gospel? Well, our answer, God, who reveals himself through creation, showed himself specifically to the nation of Israel. And in the gospel, God revealed himself as three persons, yet one God. The Father sent his Son, and they sent forth the Holy Spirit, who is our advocate. Now, as a family, walk through the Continuing the Conversations handout and join with us this week as we reflect on the gift of the Trinity.